Hey everyone, welcome to Robust QA. My name is Abhishek Patel and today I want to talk about the auto waiting feature in Playwright. So as you are already aware, if you are already using Playwright, that uh, Playwright provides out of box auto waiting feature. That means when it performs a user action like click or fill, it will just wait for that element to be appear on the screen before it perform any actions. So there are certain conditions it needs to be true before it performs the action. So here is the documentation. So like click action will wait for all these four conditions to be true before it performs the click on that particular UI element. So four, action, four um, conditions are visible, true, stable, receive events, enable, and editable. So when all these four conditions are true, it will perform click, right? And if it's not uh, true, then it will just wait for one of these condition to be true. And if it does not, becomes true in 30 seconds because that's a default timeout and then the test will time out and it will fail. However, if you notice here, not all the user action wait for all the condition to be true. For instance, like locator.fill, just wait for element to be visible, but it does not wait for this condition like stable or receive event to be true, right? So the point here is that if you are using one of the action that does not wait for all these condition to be true, then your test might be uh, flaky or it's going to fail. So it's very important that you know how to properly utilize uh, the auto waiting feature in Playwright in order to make your test more robust and flake proof. Okay, so I have this example here and let me show you the example. So I have this test, I have this URL which is like UI testing playground.ajax and let me refresh this and the when I click on this butter trigger edges request it will take like 15 seconds for that green message to appear okay so this button appeared on the screen and it took 15 seconds now let me run this test what this test really does is it just click on this button trigger edges and it will wait for this element to appear and then it will click on it. Let me run this. You will see on the left in the IDE, it clicked on this button, it just took 105 microseconds and now it's waiting for this element to be clickable. In other words, it's waiting for all those four conditions that we saw to be true. Once all those four conditions is true, it's going to click. Now condition got true and it clicked. And you see it took like 15 seconds for this element to be clickable. Okay, now here is the another test which will fail and you may ask why and the reason is because this function or this method will not wait for 30 seconds or will not wait for all the condition that we saw to be true, right? So if you are using this uh, function and you just expect it to wait for all this condition to be true, then your test will fail. Now let me run this and let me first comment out this and I will show you, I will explain why I use this uh, line or sentence. Let me run this and you see it will fail and it failed. As expected, it failed. Now in order to pass this test, we have to explicitly mention that we, we are waiting for that element to appear on the screen because you can see it did not appear in the time and it failed. Now, first thing is we are getting the locator, like button trigger, uh, button triggering edges request. And once we get this uh, element stored in the success message, we want to wait for that element till the state is visible on the screen. Okay, and once it is visible, then it will get all the text content from this button. And then we are going to do assertion. That means we are just going to verify that the data loaded with Ajax is uh, the text content of that button or that element. Now this test will pass. You can see now it's going to wait. Now this waiting is for, as I said, is for 30 seconds and 30 seconds is for the whole test. If this button does not appear in 13 seconds, I mean 30 seconds, then the whole test will time out. And as you can see now it passed. It took 15 seconds here for this uh, button uh, to be visible on the screen and then it passed. Just uh, press control space and you will see that there are two 
parameter is takes one is state and timeout so state is like visible right and there are four different arguments you can pass like hidden detach or attach attach means it will wait till the, it is attached to the dome visible is when it is visible on the screen okay the, the other argument is this one so wait for timeout 20 second that means this is more of like an explicit wait if you are coming from selenium you already know it will wait for 20 second for this element uh, to be appear on screen or for all the all those four condition to be true before it performs click or performs this action not click but this uh, specific action let me run this and now here as we already know this element will take 15 seconds and as soon as the 15 seconds is uh, up our program will proceed further so 20 seconds it won't utilize the all 20 seconds but as soon as it will hit 15 seconds it will just proceed further and as you can see it did what was expected third way to wait for the element interactable is to pass the hard wait this is not at all recommended but there are some times when you can't do anything and you have to pass the hard wait so this is like page dot wait for timeout uh, 20 seconds that means when i run this even after element being interactable the code will stop here and wait for 20 seconds to timeout and then it will proceed further so 20 seconds is hard width and as you can already guess that this will slow down your test width so this is not at all recommended the recommended one is this one it's very easy to read and know what's going on here and the last but not least the thing is like this particular expect or the expect does not wait for 30 seconds it will just wait for five seconds for all this condition be, to be true right and if uh, if the element does not appear in five seconds then the expect is going to fail now let me run this and what this test does is simply get the element inside this variable and it's just uh, validates that it has this message right um, now let me run this and you will notice that it's going to fail I was waiting here, as you can see, it's waiting, 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 but it won't wait for 30 seconds. Okay, the reason the test passed because I think I, yeah, here, I mentioned the expect, I have overridden the expect, default expect timeout with the timeout 16,000 seconds. Let me run this again and you will see. And I will come back to the playwright config and explain you uh, why I passed that. But this time it will fail. It will wait just wait for five seconds so default timeout is five seconds for expect that means assertion will only wait for five seconds before it times out and as you can see it just timed out now how to override this there are two ways to override this first you can pass the argument here like timeout 20 seconds so this will pass because our element takes 15 seconds to appear and we have already passed like 20 seconds so this will pass now You can see it passed. However, let's say your application is quite slow and you want all the expect to wait at least 30 seconds before you perform validation, then the best way would be go to the playwright.config.ts and once you are here, you can use this line inside the define config, inside this block, just use this uh, expect timeout 16,000. Now, you don't have to remember this you can simply find out like time out time out in playwright and here you will find it like see here the default timeout for test is 30 seconds and default timeout for expect is 5 seconds and to override it we are uh, going to copy and paste this line same goes with the uh, test so let's say if you expect your test to run slow then you can override this timeout uh, with the value of your choice like six uh, in this case i'm passing the 60,000 millisecond that means 60 seconds so now the test will wait for a minute before it times out right now case where you don't want to wait for 60 seconds for all the tests because your application is pretty fast however there are some tests which are quite slow so what you can do is you can explicitly mention that test to run for 60 seconds or at least wait for 60 seconds before times out for example 
let's say this particular task I want to wait. So there are two methods I can use. First is test dot slope. What this method does is like it's going to multiply the time that you have mentioned in the define config by three. If you have not defined any time out here, then it will multiply the default time that is 30 second multiply by three. Okay. And uh, if you want to explicitly mention the timeout, then you can do test dot set timeout and uh, 20 seconds. So, or maybe you know 60 seconds. So this particular test will wait for 60 seconds before it times out, while all other tests will just wait for the default timeout that is 30 seconds. Of course, when I remove this timeout from the defined config. Okay, so that's all in this video. So hope this makes uh, sense and this gives you the idea that not all of the actions in Playwright wait for all this condition to be true. So if you come across a test which is flaky, then I would highly recommend just go through this uh, document and find out why it is and use the explicit weight as we have discussed here. That's all. Uh, see you next time in another video. Thank you.